Hello and welcome to another dynamic paint tutorial in Blender. So in this one we're gonna look at a combination of fire and smoke and dynamic paint. Yes, that is correct. We can combine the two, we can create fire and smoke trails behind objects, we can have fire spreading in a house, in a forest, whatever, um, based on a dynamic paint system, which is incredibly useful because we can control a dynamic paint system with a brush, right? Which is, in this case, this ball. So wherever this ball goes, we've got a fire and smoke trail following it, which is amazing. Um, some use cases could also be, for example, um, a rocket car leaving a trail of fire and smoke, um, something like that, or a rocket, I don't know, going over a surface, I'm not sure why that will happen. Uh, but I, I'm sure you can think of other ideas. So this is what we're going to be working on. And the effect looks very, very beautiful, right? Amazing. So uh, let's get started. Create a new file and let's delete our cube. Shift A, mesh, plane. Now uh, let's see the dimensions. I want this to be like proper dimensions. So I'm going to make this like six meters. There we go. Um, and let's make sure to apply that skill. Control A, apply skill. Shift A, mesh and UV sphere. And skill is down a little bit. This is going to be our paint brush like we had before right mouse shade smooth Control a apply skill now you know make it a little bit bigger there we go and apply skill <laughs> um so you know by now if you've watched our other videos about dynamic paint that for a dynamic paint system to work we need an actual paint brush and canvas right and that is what we set up right now so let's select our canvas and rename this to canvas and rename our brush to brush now I want this brush to be animated, so I'm going to go back to frame one and I'm gonna move this to where I want this to be. For example, there, I is gonna, for me, insert a keyframe for everything. You can also just right mouse on the location and insert keyframes, go to frame 80, GY, and set another keyframe there. And let's limit our viewports or our um, frame range, our scene range to 80 as well. So that if we just play this, it's going to just go from left to right in a linear constant motion. Well, not really linear, but you know what I mean. So let's save this, Control S, just save your files from the start and name it something proper, like Fire Drill, amazing thing, you know? And this is where we start our setup. So in order to combine a fire smoke simulation with a dynamic paint system, we need to follow a step-by-step -step program pretty much, right? And that's what I'm gonna just give you the basics of. So we can first just set up a dynamic paint system, all right? And you know that a dynamic paint system will use objects data, vertex data, geometry to create a mask, which means that if we have a plane with four vertices, there is no data for this to create a paint map in the middle, for example. So we need to add a little bit of geometry. So let's just add a modifier and name this subdivision surface at simple and like five or six. Let's set this to six um, subdivisions for now and see how it looks later. So now we're actually able to add a little bit of a mask from dynamic paint. So let's set up a canvas. So go to the physic properties. And let's add a dynamic paint system. There we go. And we can now add a canvas here. Beautiful. Okay. So uh, by default, um, this is going to be set at paint. And we are not going to use paint in this one. Well, well, well. And we're also not going to use this place. We're actually going to use weight for this one. And there's a simple reason. And that is because a fire and smoke simulation, the only way to control where it's going to really um, emit that fire from is with our weight paint map, right? And we have that option here as well, because we can add the service type to be weight, scroll down to output, and we'll have a vertex group as an output of our dynamic paint. So just hit that plus sign to make sure that this weight paint is going to be created and select our brush and we can now add a dynamic paint there as well. But this is going to be a brush, add brush. So the default settings here are completely fine. So this is just our brush works like that. Beautiful. So the canvas we can make a little change if we want. 
um, for example, I'm not even going to use that, but you can, for example, use a little bit of dissolve to also have your fire um, dissolve at a certain point again. And, but I'm just going to leave everything as it is. And we don't have to set up a brush collection. It's just going to use whatever dynamic paint brush is set up, right? And which means you can also use multiple brushes, right? Multiple brushes to control where your fire is going to be. So how do we now check how this mask, how this dynamic paint output looks? And um, because it's a weight paint map, we can see it in the in the materials, we can see it in a solid view, but we can change this to weight paint and see how it looks, right? It's just adding a weight paint map. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that's just gonna leave that weight paint in a dynamic motion, right? And you can change that, you can change the spread of that, you can change the um, shrinking, stuff like that. But I'm just going to leave it like this because fire is going to be chaotic anyway. Um, it's just going to cover our, our entire trail probably. Right, so let's just leave it like this for now. Um, let's go back to object mode now that we work, uh, now that we know that our um, dynamic paint weight output is actually working, we can start up our fire smoke simulation. Let's head back to frame zero. And a smoke fire simulation is incredibly easy to set up in Blender thanks to a quick smoke setting. Um, and in this one, I don't want my ball to be my fire object because that's just there to create a mask, remember? Um, I want my canvas that is actually receiving that Wayne's paint map to tell us where the fire needs to be. That is also going to be our smoke and fire emitter. Okay, so select that, go to object quick effects and quick smoke so by default uh, that smoke and fire is going to be everywhere i don't want that to happen so select our canvas and let's go over to um let's just pop this in um our fluid is the smoke and fire simulation right it just use a fluid simulation and um, that is something we want to have after the dynamic paint in order to actually use that weight paint map from the dynamic paint so switch these around like that and open fluid, and we can set our vertex group to be DP weight there. And already you can tell that it's going to expel that, um, emit that smoke and fire from that trail that we are creating. All right, isn't that beautiful? Now, by default, if you set up a quick smoke effect, um, your canvas, your, your emitter object is going to turn into a wire display, which I don't want in this case because I just want this to be the floor. So we can go back to object and we can go to viewport display and switch this back from uh, wire to a solid. There we go. And now we can actually start working on that fire and smoke simulation. Okay, so in our emitter, we don't really have to change a lot other than perhaps, um, let's say we could be changing a little bit of that fire. Um, I'm going to give it an initial velocity because I like my fire and smoke if my object's moving that way. Um, I would like this smoke and fire to be expelled a little bit to the left, right? To create a little bit of a nice motion like this is actually expelling some kind of a force to the left that drives the ball forward. If this would, for example, be a car or anything rocket powered, for example. Um, so I'm just going to set my normal velocity to zero. And I'm going to set my left direction, which is in this case my Y direction. I'm going to set that to be minus one. Beautiful. So now if we just go back and play this again, our fire and smoke is going to be expelled to the left a little bit, as you can see. Beautiful. Um, so in our domain setting is where everything takes place that controls how our fire and smoke is going to look. Okay. And the most important one is going to be the... Um, resolution because that is going to define the actual details in our um, simulation and you can see this how will it look right one resolution one block of um, resolution is what I like to call it is like this big which means that the fire is not going to be able to really get more detail than these blocks right so 32 is quite low um, but you can cheat this a tiny little bit by adding a bit of noise so let's scroll down to the noise and if you now play this again, we're going to add a little bit of noise to that smoke and fire. That is a bit more independent of this resolution, right? Think about just a procedural noise shader as well. It's a little bit more independent of resolution and stuff, um, which is quite interesting. 
Right, so just a little bit of noise. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave the default settings. Beautiful, amazing. So that is quite decent for a first setup, I feel like. So we can just crank this to like 64 for now and see how this looks, right? Just play it um, until like a point where you're satisfied, whereas there's some smoke and fire in your simulation. Perhaps everything is rising a little bit slow, um, but I think it's fine to work with for now, okay? So let's pause it right here and let's worry about the materials. I'm gonna go to my render engine. I'm just gonna set this to cycles because I like it more. GPU, and by default, let's add an environment texture or like a sky texture will be fine as well, but I'm gonna use an environment texture. So click on the little color dot, switches to environment texture and open up an HDRI. So if you click on open, your file explorer will be there and I'm gonna locate my HDRI. And I'm gonna use a Whipple Creek gazebo. I just like that one. If you don't have any HDRIs, don't worry, go to poly, polyhaven, polyhaven.com and you will be able to download them for free. It's just an environment texture that is going to add some reflections, some nice lighting in your scene, right? If I go to rendered view, we have a nice 360 image in our scene now. And for some reason, I keep coming back to this one, Whipple Creek, um, because I think it has nice lighting. It looks cool. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna hide my background though. So go to render film and just transparent. I don't want all that. Um, noise in the background, all that chaos. And let's open up the shader editor. So drag that window to the left, set this to shader editor and select your smoke domain, right? There we go. And let's create a nice looking fire shader, just a quick one, nothing too fancy, but something that looks like there's at least fire in our scene. And let's make sure that if we click on our domain, smoke domain, and let's go to our physics properties. Let's make sure that our smoke um, I think I'm in the wrong one. I think we need to go to the emitter. Yes, um, so click on your canvas. And we need this to be um, fire and smoke instead of just smoke. Otherwise, we won't be able to really add a flame in there, right? Fire and smoke. Nothing happens here. And that's because we need to do that in shading. So let's click on the smoke domain. That's going to take care of the shading of the volume. And let's hit shift A and find a volume info. And the volume info contains all the information we need pretty much, right? It has a density, it has a flame, and temperature. Well, temperature we don't even need. We just need these two pretty much. So let's connect the density to the density. And that's just going to control the density of our smoke. And let's control, uh, connect the flame to the emission strength and also to the emission color. All right, so nothing really changed yet, but we're gonna we're gonna do that. Don't worry about it. Shift A, find a math node, add it in here, multiply. So we can just control the density of our smoke, right? I like some dense smoke. Um, I love the look of that. 35, right? Random value, beautiful. Hit Shift A, find another math node, and connect it there between our flame and the emission strength. Let me just drag a little dot here. Hold shift, right mouse. You can add little dots, right, to uh, oh, um, to realign the movement of your lines so they don't get entangled. And we can add some new emission here. Beautiful. But we do probably need to rerun the simulation because the one we ran before is still the one where we only had it set at smoke. So go back replay your simulation and right away you can see we've got some kind of emission going on in there as well and um, which is the fire right and we will be shading that a different color unless you like your flame to be white then you can stick to this so let's pause it right here beautiful let's select our canvas and just make this a new material or uh, black so we can see what is going on a little tiny bit better there we go select our smoke domain and let's get back here, right? So we can now control the emission of that flame, right? Try to get just something that you think looks looks all right. And we can just find shift A, a color ramp and add that in here. And this color ramp is able to shade our flame based on the flame information of the volume, which means that we can add different temperature colors to the flame, right? And if I drag this black slider more to the right, our flame will get a little bit smaller. We can hit plus 
and add a new color for our flame like orange beautiful drag this a bit more to the left we can hit plus find another color here it's more the the more hot fire like it is in the center where it's getting it's expelled it's usually a little bit um, more yellow um whitish like that we can add another one that is even more yellow whitish like that and let's just try and make everything a bit more visible all of these colors there we go white i want that to be perhaps a little bit involved and then as a cherry on the cake i'm adding another black color on the right right and let's play around with these values so you can see if we add another black value there on the right it is going to give us a little bit of see-through at the center of our flame which i find quite nice to look at okay um let's just try and tweak this a little bit and um, i'm not gonna go too crazy on this um because we've got more to do and um, but i think the initial setup right it works quite fine beautiful 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 and um, play around with the density as well and um, sometimes you have got a bit too much or too little and um, i want my flame to go through a tiny bit just like that beautiful and if you're a fan of for example um the f the fire that looks more like it is inside of the smoke inside of the volume um you can use the density value of our volume as well to control for example the color so add a color ramp and add this to be your emission color all right and then you can see that we're actually going to be able to get some fire in there some explosions have this look more of this look right where we have an actual um, fire as smoke pretty much right they are intertwining a bit more i guess and um, which is totally possible as well right all you need to do is use that smoke density input instead of the uh, uh the the other inputs right so just play around with that. Uh, I'm not completely satisfied with how that looks, but you know what I mean, right? Just play around with this <laughs> until you're satisfied. Um, but I'm gonna stick with our good old original flame. There we go. Amazing. All right, so by default, I would want a bit more resolution in my flame, right? So this is not really the, the final resolution I would simulate this in, but it is a good start. And what I am going to do is set my uh, domain, right? Our smoke domain resolution to like 150. And then I'm just going to go back to frame one. And I'm going to go to our cache setting. Um, a little bit more to the bottom. Cache, I'm going to set my end frame to be 80. There we go. And if we want to bake this, we need to switch type from replay to all. That way we can actually hit the big button. Now, because this is a combination between dynamic paint and a fire smoke simulation, and our resolution is 150, this is going to take a little bit of time, um, but it's worth it. If you would use this for a final, final render, right? I'm not going to take that much time to do this one. I would crank up the resolution even more to like 256 or even more. Um, but for now, I'm just going to bake this, and then after it's done, I'll be back. All right, the simulation is finished. Um, let's see. Oh, look at that. We got a way more detail already. Let's go back to render view, see how it looks. So you can tell that it helps a lot to already have a higher resolution. And perhaps once you do that, you will need to tweak these values just a tiny bit more, right? Where you get a bit more orange in there and tame our fire just a slightly bit. Perhaps it can be more emissive though, right? Fire is very emissive there we go um looking quite decent i would say perhaps this value is not completely the one i would go for though um but you can tell this is already looking beautiful let's enable denoise right while we're at it and i'm just gonna set this to be open image denoise um feels a little bit faster to me um so let's see right play this up you can see we're getting a beautiful fire trail behind our object behind our object 
Um, that is also getting a nice smoke plume there. And it's actually very, very cool, this combination, right? And you can just go back to your dynamic paint, to your emitter. This is not the actual emitter of your fire and smoke, but it is the object that is causing the smoke trail. Which means if you animate this to be in a circle, where is the, there we go, instead of the straight line, this is of course also going to be a beautiful circle, right? And you can change that to any shape, multiple objects, whatever um, that you would like. You can also make this go up or down, you can create your house, you can set your house um, to be an entire canvas and to be um, the emitter of that fire and smoke and you can move your brush over your house to tell exactly which places need to catch fire and which places not and when which place needs to catch fire and how the fire spreads and shrinks you know um it is all really really interesting to at least start looking at all right so i hope you learned a new combination right um that is a dynamic paint and fire and smoke simulation i hope you liked the tutorial if you did please leave a like a comment subscribe we would enjoy any one of these and then we'll see you in the next one cheers